What's going on, Love Attraction Life Family? Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. I see that you people are starting to get attracted to the Instagram Live. Love Attraction is very strong with us today, guys. Uh, extremely strong. Because um, you're going to see. I encourage you to stay. I'm going to encourage you to also tag some friends, invite some friends to this Instagram live. Uh, you can tag them in the comments. They're going to be notified. And usually, of course, we go and we chat and we uh, talk a bit with uh, everyone in the marvelous, magnificent manifestation uh, chats. But I'm not going to do that today because today we have a special guest, one of the best in the industry. Um, have you seen the movie The Secret? We are 3. million people on Law of Attraction Live. Uh, most of you guys are here because of the movie The Secret or the book The Secret. I'm here because of the movie The Secret or the book The Secret. Well, mostly the movie because I'm not uh, into reading the book so much. And we're going to have John Asraf joining us today. John Asraf, he is one of the leading mindset and behavior experts in the world. He's a star of the movie The Secret. He's been uh, at... Uh, Famous TV shows like uh, Larry King and Ellen DeGeneres. He built five multi-million dollar companies. He created a bunch of amazing personal development programs, including the Brainathon. The Brainathon. Okay, you go to run a marathon for your body, then to challenge yourself and to go to the next level. Well, the Brainathon, which is a free event that John's putting together this month, um, is where you go and you challenge and learn and take the next level with your brain, with your mind, and we all want to do that. So please hang on, uh, invite some, uh, some of your friends here because we have an amazing, an amazing entrepreneur, leader, thought leader and John Asaraf's vision board game is probably the best in the world as you probably know from, um, from the movie The Secret. Um, we're going we're gonna to ask some questions at the end, we're going to do a Q&A at the end if you have some time, but uh, now let's learn how to use our brain power to manifest an amazing life together with our amazing friend and mentor, John Asaraf. Many blessings to all, I see, that. I see there's a bunch of you guys from all over the world. My friend Tiberius, how are you? Welcome, John. I'm very good, thank you. It's nice uh, to Tiberius, speak in person. Your, your name, Tiberius, was the second emperor of Rome. Yes, because a true leader always lets the other one be number one. <laughs> How are you? Are you, uh, are you in Greece right now? I'm in Greece here. I'm studying mythology and um, philosophy. I'm just traveling the world now, getting to the roots very of good. wisdom. So I started with this. Kala. <laughs> Arispera. I have many, many Greek friends, and I've been to Greece many times and love it there. It's an amazing place. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's amazing, John. We, I've, I've worked uh, for your projects in the past, actually, when you had an event with Lon in London 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, I've been, uh, and you probably heard my name before, uh, because my American friends call me Tibi, not Tiberius. Got it. Tibi, I love it. <laughs> yeah. And before we start, I want I want to share a story for everyone here because you know I have uh, I'm coming from a ex communist country. Didn't grow with a lot of opportunities, especially we're talking brain accounts. No way. Like I grew up with a lot of let's say baggage that's not serving uh, elevated thoughts. And I got into one of your programs because this is one of the best stories I have actually. Uh, uh, I got into one of your programs ten years ago, probably maybe 11 years ago. It was called Winning the Inner Game of Money. Love it, yeah. <clears throat> and it's an amazing program. And, and, and uh, I know it's part of your Brainathon um, uh, event, which, guys, I'm going to encourage you to attend by going to the link in the bio or in our stories at Law of Attraction Life. But you have that program, and, and it has a, a, a big meditation part. You've got, you got to meditate for 30 minutes, and, you know, there, there, there's a lot of empowering messages there and some stories, some metaphors. And I'm like, okay, this is a cool program. I didn't really understand how it works. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to do it. Uh, I'm good at doing stuff. Like if you tell me staying on your head for 30 days, and if I trust you, I'm going to do it, even if I don't understand it. Me too. And I remember, 
I remember, you know, following the program, following the program, following the program, it's about replacing negative beliefs about money. And I, I, I didn't feel anything changing, you know. I didn't feel like, oh, my God, today I'm like, oh, a billionaire, wow, you know. And some people think that the way limiting beliefs changes, like uh, something special happens one day and you wake up Superman. But I remember getting a contract. And I remember writing that contract. And I remember being afraid not to have that uh, not to lose that opportunity for my web development company. And I usually had the worst prices in the world, like, like third world prices, right? But while I was writing the contract, something came from the program, came into my mind about my work and about what I can do. And about, you know, like, and I'm like, no, I got to apply my work in this contract. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the prices that I deserve I should have. It was a big price. It was a price that, that I would, I used to earn 300 bucks a month when I had my first job. And this contract was probably what I would earn in one year and a half or something like that. Like, like it, it, it scared me, you know, like just write it. But something from that program came into my head. I'm like, no, this is your worth. This is, this is, and I, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. And then they said, you know what? It's a bit pricey. They came back, yeah, it's a bit pricey. I am saying, you know what? This is my worth. I replied in the email. And then they replied back, you know what, we're going to work with you. And this was a breakthrough moment for me because I'm like, oh, my God, this is how clearing limiting beliefs work. It's not some amazing, magical thing. It's like you're just starting to realize in those key moments of decisions that, 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 that you're like more of a worthwhile person. Just wanted to share this because it's like part of my journey. It's a great story. I want to show you something. You know, when we when we take a look at the human brain, which is um, as a behavioral neuroscientist and somebody into neuropsychology, you talk about beliefs, right? And you talk about whether we listen to um, my brain training programs, you don't feel anything. Well, what's a belief in the brain? Like if mm -hmm. you were to say, was I born with any beliefs? It doesn't matter if you're born in Russia, Czechoslovakia, India, Alaska, Israel, Montreal, Saudi Arabia, it doesn't matter. Everybody was born with a brain that has unlimited potential. And we weren't born with any beliefs, not how much we are worth, how much we can earn, not any skills, not any knowledge, clean slate. So when you look a little bit beneath the surface, and you ask a neuroscientist, what is a belief in the brain? A scientist will tell you it's nothing more than cells that made connections that got reinforced over time. So what happens is, let's say I believe that I'm uh, too young to make money or too old to make money, or because I was born in a certain part of the world, making money is hard or because there's certain things happening in the world, it's really hard to make money right now. So beliefs could empower us or disempower us. We could develop beliefs that are constructive and positive, but we can also develop destructive negative beliefs. So from a scientific perspective, it's nothing more than when cells have come together to formulate a connection and then they're reinforced. So where did we get these beliefs? Well, maybe our parents, maybe our grandparents, maybe our, our, our teachers in school, maybe our friends and, and what their parents did, what our parents did. So we formulated these neural networks and patterns that then operate automatically and cause us to see the world, to feel the world and to behave in ways that match the beliefs. So when we do the brainathon, we teach people how to change the beliefs what we're teaching them how to do is how to create a new, more positive, empowering pattern. And the reason you don't feel it is the same reason, you know, you don't feel that you're getting stronger when you walk. Mm. Right? Your muscles are getting yeah. stronger, but you might be sore, okay, from doing exercise. But when you do inner size, Okay, so let's say you're learning how to meditate. And people say, I have a hard time meditating. I have so many thoughts. Well, that's the struggle. That's the internal struggle. But when you meditate for one day, for seven days, for 14 days, for a month, for three months, now it becomes easier. When yeah. you learn how to focus, 
and you practice one day, three days, 10 days, 20 days, now it becomes easier. Those are what I call our neuro muscles. And so we could learn through a variety of methodologies how to use mental and emotional strengthening techniques that then change us a little bit at a time so that we are smarter, we have empowered beliefs, we have more powerful habits, we have a greater awareness, we have greater self-confidence, self-worth, self-esteem, and we develop the beliefs that I'm good enough, I'm worried enough, I can achieve whatever I want to achieve. But it's an inside out game. And we're not usually taught how to do that um, you know, in, in school or even through our parents. So that's why I always have my $100 billion brain with me. $100 billion brain. Well, think about this, TB. Okay. Um, if you had $100 billion right now, could you create a human brain? Nope. So it's worth more than that because you can't even with a hundred billion dollars, you can't even create it. So you and I, we already own the most powerful biocomputer in the whole world with zero users manual. And we take it for granted. And you take it for granted because you're born with it. You're and many times we abuse it. And we abuse it. And what happens is, you know, we, we develop these ideas. They're just not true. And then we live with them for the rest of our lives. And so let me, let me sh sh give you an example. And everybody can maybe um, say yes or no in, in the chat. Um, did you believe when you were a little boy or a little girl that Santa Claus is real? <laughs> did you believe with your whole heart that Santa Claus is real? Well, uh, uh, of course we did, right? Is Santa Claus real? No, but the idea, the emotion, the celebration, the environment, the gifts, the fun, right? Created these patterns that we believed is true, but Santa Claus is not true and real, except in our imagination. Well, is it possible that believing that you're not good enough, not smart enough, um, you're too young, you're too old, you're not deserving enough to, to make more money, to live a life of your dreams. Do you think maybe it's an idea that isn't true? Well, what if you can let that go and develop more empowering, constructive, powerful ideas, beliefs, habits, perspectives, and behaviors that are aligned with what you want to achieve? We live, it's 2021, the end of 2021. Everything we want, all the how-to we want for health, wealth, relations, career, business, making more money, managing money, investing, we, are, we know how. Right? We live in the best time ever. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? Which means we also know how to use our brain that we already own better. We don't owe one penny on our brain. There's no mortgage on it. <laughs> right? So we don't owe anybody any money on our brain. All we need to do is learn how to use it a little bit better. And if we can learn how to use it a little bit better and focus on how we can and how to upgrade our skills, how to let go of habits that hold us back and how to create new powerful habits and upgrade our skills, we can achieve two, three, four X our current results. So we don't have to be victims of you know, the past. We don't have to be victims of our present circumstances but you have to be willing to be open-minded to learn and to grow. Absolutely. I remember, John, um, what got me into, into this industry, actually, is I was 19, I had a job, um, I was in a video production company, and I was the driver there, and the one that would plug in the equipment and then carry it, basically. And what shocked me was that we were filming an interview with one of the richest guys in Romania, self-made guy, young guy, self-made. <clears throat> and he came to the, to, 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 the, to the show and he came and he shook hands with everyone in, in the team. And that was the guy in the back. He came to me and he's like, hi, you know. And I, 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 I was shocked. I was shocked because I, I was like, oh, my God, why would he ever shake hands with me? Because I had all these limiting beliefs and I think they're pretty much international that – Rich people are bad, arrogant, corrupt, you know, uh, they, 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 they're disrespectful, they, they're like, 
And then I went to my boss and I, I said, boss, please tell me, like, what's, what's with this guy? Like, how did he become so successful? And my, my boss told me, go and watch the movie The Secret. And I watched the movie The Secret. I, like, I watched it. Like, <laughs> like, like, my life depended on it, you know. And I want to ask you some questions, John, because this yeah. is a big community. And, and um, <clears throat> I get questions. And you've been in The Secret. And, and uh, many of the law of attraction questions I get here are like, tell me how I can win the lottery with the law of attraction. Tell me how I can manifest how can I manifest a million dollars fast? How I can manifest a million dollars by Monday? How I can, uh, uh, tell me the secret uh, phrase that's gonna make me a billionaire tomorrow. And I, can you teach us some law of attraction common sense, please? Maybe some do's and don'ts, because, because I think you're the best person to teach this. Thank you. So listen, the good news about the secret, the movie, is it exposed people to you know, the possibility that I can create and I'm creating my reality. The problem with the secret is it misrepresented or people misinterpreted this law of attraction that all I have to do is think about it and say something and poof, it's going to be knocking on my door you know, with a million dollars or a car or a trip around the world or the lottery you know, we're gonna win. So if we want to really understand the law of attraction, and first and foremost, let me be the first to say there is no such thing in physics or quantum physics that can show factually the law of attraction, whereby um, one magnet that's positive and another magnet that's positive connect. As a matter of fact, a positive magnet and another positive magnet, they repel. Mm -hmm. So the law of attraction, the way most people think about it is bullshit. It's just airy fairy bullshit. Let me explain. What are the last six letters of the word attraction? You have to combine two things, the law of attraction with the law of Goya. G-O-Y-A, remember? And that is the get off your ass law and do the right thing in the right order at the right time. Part one, part two. Let's agree that everything is made up of energy and frequency or vibration, right? So my hand is vibrating right now. If I had a microscope and I could look at my hand, my energy is what is vibrating? And so what is my hand made up of? Hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, right? Elements that I can't see with my eyes, but when these elements are together, they coalesce into a solid form, right? If I was to burn my finger, right, I would burn, okay, the hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon, and it would just go into the air, ether, or gas, but it's still energy. So let's think of the law of attraction a little bit differently. What if we understood that frequencies that resonate connect, right? And frequencies that don't resonate are out of coherence. They're not in concert. So let's think of music. I want you to think of um, a band or an orchestra. And let's assume that every band member or orchestra person in the orchestra knows how to play his or her instrument beautifully. Maybe one person can sing, the other person plays the guitar, another person plays the piano. What happens when these people get together and they're not playing in harmony or coherence? It sounds terrible. They're incoherent incoherent they're in chaos they may be excellent on their own but they're not in concert now when you get them to play in concert okay um, uh, uh, what happens then the piano and the saxophone and the vocalist right and the trombone uh, it sounds beautiful it's it's an orchestra it's in concert it's in harmony it's in flow so what if i shared with you and everybody else What's my job as a human being on this planet, which operates by physical laws, 
what's my job on this planet if I want to uh, if I want to have more success? Well, is it possible that I need to get my mindset right? Right, get getting the mindset in the right vibration with my vision, <clears throat> my focus, uh, my concentration on what I want. I need to have the beliefs required to achieve those because if I have a belief that I want that I think I can achieve that, but I have an opposing belief that says, but what if I'm not good enough? What if I'm not smart enough? What if I'm not worthy enough? Now I have chaos here. What's yeah. gonna in my in my emotional vibration am i going to be in coherence and concert or is part of me going to want this but another part of me is going to feel uncertain so now i'm going to have chaos going on in here and since this is 100 trillion cells okay of energy vibrating at the level of my thought and my emotions is it possible that I'm not going to take inspired action towards what it is that I want? So part of the law of attraction is how do I get my head, my heart, my mm. gut in concert, in harmony with the behaviors to move me towards what I want to clear, okay, all of the obstacles. So that's one visual, but I wanna give you another visual that's even easier to understand. Would you agree that, you know, uh, on your radio or on your cell phone, you can turn the station for any type of music you want? So every radio has, let's say, 100 different stations or 500 or 1,000 stations. So what happens when you tune in, tune in to a station, whatever the station is, 95.5, let's say it's classical music, and you say, I don't want classical music, and you go to 95.6, just one little bit over, classical music goes away, punk rock is there. Now think about this, the radio has a receiver, it receives or tunes into a frequency that's already in the room, right? So we could tune into 95.5, boom, we're locked on classical. 95.6, punk rock. 95.7, jazz. 95.8, we have um, Indian music. 95.9, we have Romanian music. 95 point, you know, whatever. And we can go channel, 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 and we can delete all the other channels by tuning into the channel we want, tapping into the frequency that's already here. So the law of attraction is really the law of resonance. Now, is it true that our eyes allow light energy in through our eyeballs? Our brain, right, receives frequency, radio free, light frequency through the eyes, radio frequency through the ears, tactile frequency through the hands, and our senses through the nose. So is it possible that this brain of ours is an electromagnetic switching station? And when we get locked and loaded on what we want, how we can achieve it, we take action towards it, we eliminate the, the vibration of fear, we eliminate the vibration of uncertainty and doubt, and we lock in on the station mentally, emotionally, gut-wise, and behaviorally, that is the frequency of success. Now, when people are thinking positive but feeling negative, they're, they're switching stations and they're wondering, why is this not working? They're focused yeah. on what they don't want and why they can't achieve it. And they're wondering, why isn't this working? So Absolutely. when we're talking about the law of attraction, we're talking about getting into really understanding energy, but getting into the law of resonance. Mm -hmm. And I want to get my thoughts, my feelings and my actions in resonance with that which I want, that is, that I am seeking because it's already there seeking me. Thank you so much, John. This uh, video will be the answer to the thousands of more questions I'm going to receive on the page regarding the law of attraction and how to magically make uh, boom, boom, things appear out, out of uh, 
out yeah. of nowhere. It's 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 such a great answer. Thank you. Well, it's, out of, it's out of no thing, right? It's like yeah. you, we we can't see the space in between our hand, right? But what do we know? In the space, right, in between my hands, there's enough energy to boil every ocean. There's enough energy. There's hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. So it, when we learn how to release the energy, okay, that's in this little box of space, that's the energy in the quantum field. So and we focus on such a limited amount of information. Sometimes I do this exercise with myself. Let's say we I'm in an elevator. I start looking around and I, I, I start noticing details because I'm not a detailed type of a person and, and I'm practicing this. And then I'm thinking I'm seeing 0.001% of everything that's going on here. That's right. That's correct. We, are, we only allow a certain amount of the light frequency through our eyes. It's our brain that sees. We only allow a portion of the sound frequency in through our ears. A, a bat or a dolphin, they hear at you know, 60, 70, 80,000 decibels per second. We only hear at about 25,000 decibels per second. We don't see all of the light spectrum. We see just a fraction of the light spectrum, right? And that's just so that we don't fry our brains because there's so much information. And so we can also start to see though with our inner eye of understanding, with our higher cortical functions of intuition, right? We can feel more by practicing, okay, being more aware of the emotions, the energy in motion. That's what emotion is, is the energy in motion. You know what most people are trying to do with the emotions they don't like? They want to move away from them and suppress them and hide them instead of express them. So yeah. we're, we're just um, early in the development of humanity, you know, 500 years of research only. We've been as homo sapien walking on planet Earth for about 200,000 years, about 2 million years in different uh, evolutionary facets of our um, humanity. Um, and we're just starting to learn how to use this biocomputer better. I mean, that's why I started the Brainathons to give people, you know, more information on how do I use my brain better? How do I let go of my limiting beliefs? How do I let go of the fears that hold me back? How do I let go of the habits that are holding me hostage and keeping me stuck? Let's, let's go to science that's given us a lot of the information on how to do it now. Can you tell us uh, more about the Brainathon, John? Sure, so we have a new Brainathon. Every year I do one Brainathon that's, that's our live kickoff and I bring five or six world-renowned brain and success experts who have the evidence on how to make change easier, how to upgrade your mindset, how to upgrade your skill set. And we do a free day, free, it's not even a thousand dollars. We do a free day of training and we teach you, here's the latest information on letting go of beliefs that limit you. Here is how you can let go of fear of failure or fear of being embarrassed or ashamed or ridiculed or judged. Here's how you upgrade your self-worth, your self-image, your self-esteem. And so we show you how to do that and we do the event for free. So this year I have myself, Jack Canfield from the movie The Secret. Lisa Nichols from the movie The Secret, the Secret. Marissa Peer, a world-renowned hypnotherapist, mm -hmm. uh, Lisa Feldman Barrett, top neuroscientist in the world, Dr. John Demartini. We will from The Secret doing, also. So we're going to be doing a full day training um, from 9 o'clock Pacific time, 12 o'clock New York time for about five or six hours. And we're going to teach people for free as a way to give you the tools you need to succeed. And I see that you've got a, a, a link for people to be able to sign up and join yeah. it. It's on the 23rd of October. It's very easy to sign up. It's very easy to join. It's in our bio. It's in our story here on Law of Attraction Live. Guys, I want to tell you something because I, I, I see that with my friends uh, here from all over the world on the, on, on the call. When I started personal development, first of all, I was broke. Second, there were not a lot of free things. Nothing was free. Everything would cost. You, you, you want to learn from John, you got to go to one of his live events. You got to buy a program or at least a book or something, you know. 
now everything's free, 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 and because everything's free and 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 then so all over the place, we're just flooded with so much information. And like we do, take the billion, hundred billion dollar brain for granted. We start taking this these free events for granted as well. So my encouragement is for you to imagine that this this event costs ten thousand dollars that John gifted it for you. And please go there and and learn from these experts, you know. And then you know, take the next step and check out some of the other coaching programs that that that, that John offers. Anything that John offers, because I think now, John, we we live in in a world where there's just an abundance of information. Yeah, I'm fascinated by it, but I think it's another thing we just take for granted, you know. Uh, yeah. and, and here's one of the problems. We're so mis, uh, misdirected with information. So information and knowledge doesn't necessarily translate to behavioral change. It, it gives us awareness. But how many people do you know that have the awareness and have even the information but don't take action? And yeah. the question is why, right? So let's, let's go a little bit deeper than the, than, the, than the surface. Why don't we do the things we know we should do? And here's the reason why. When we hear inf or when we see information, you know, somebody's talking like we are or we hear it, we activate the short term memory part of our brain. And if it really is interesting, we release dopamine. It's like, oh, my God, that's so good. High five. Thank you so much, you know, um, uh, TB for for doing this. And, and I feel so excited. I feel so motivated. But why does motivation last such a short period of time? And the answer is because it's like gunpowder. It's supposed to be used to light the fuse, but it doesn't sustain. Why? Well, because there's another part of our brain called the striatum. I'm getting a little too detailed now, but there's a part of our brain when we take, for example, our toothbrush and we start to learn how to brush our teeth. We initially don't know how to do it, but if we do it one day, three days, 10 days, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, the effort that we put in repetition creates permanent patterns, right? So when we repeat a pattern, you know, 30, 40, 50, 100 times, the pattern goes from short-term memory to long-term memory and it becomes part of the habits that we develop. So why does it, is it so hard to change? Well, it's so hard to change because people are using the wrong process to change. It's not that we don't know how to change and how to deactivate an old pattern. It's that most people don't have the skill of how to do that, even though we know how to do it. It's no different than how many of you have tried to solve the Rubik's Cube? <laughs> right? Now, a lot of people have tried to solve the Rubik's Cube, but very few people actually solved the one by one, two by two, four by four, five by five. A few, few people solve it. Why? Because they don't spend enough time learning the algorithm and then practicing the algorithm. So how to solve the Rubik's Cube, you can go on YouTube and find five-year-old kids that do it. But if you don't know the algorithm, then it's hard for you. It's easy for them. So when we're talking about the science of change, now it's a skill. And our brain conserves energy uh, by creating habits. So we have habits of thought, we have emotional habits, and we have behavioral habits as a way for our brain to conserve energy and do things automatically. And this is something known as the automatic self. And it's easy for us just to stay consistent with the automatic self versus change. And especially if we don't know the process for change, it's harder. And our brain doesn't want to use up energy. It's its most powerful resource. John, what's a healthy way for a person to study or to do personal development? Find um, a teacher or two that you resonate with that is easy for you to understand, is easy for you to follow, 
Um, and somebody who really can show you a path. You know, many years ago, when I was getting on my path to personal development, I was 19. And my first mentor taught me about the power of my own mind. Mm -hmm. And so I stayed with him for like a year and a half. And then he introduced me to a few other people to listen to. And then I went on to, you know, having another two mentors. Then I went on to have another two mentors. So choose one or two people and study deeply with them. Because for the most part, they will have studied a lot of other people, right? I've been doing this, you know, I'm 60 now. I've been doing this since I'm 19, 41 years. I have read thousands of books. I've spent at least a million dollars on coaches, consultants, mentors, books. I've traveled the world to go and learn from people. There's something I could teach some people, right? And then I'm focusing on having incredible health, wealth, relationship, career, business, contribution. So if, if I appeal to you, study my work. If I don't, find somebody who you resonate with, who, who you connect with, not just at the head level, at the heart level. Does that person represent uh, a character trait that you appreciate, that you value? right? And if it's me or TB or anybody, find the resonance. This person, I think she can help me. I think he can help me. Let me read their stuff. Let me uh, get into their courses. Let me seek their counsel. Let me watch their free stuff, <laughs> right? There, there's so much free stuff uh, right now. So, so it depends on how deep you want to go. You can find people that will show you the path to make it so much easier. And it starts with awareness. Wow, maybe I can change. Maybe I can, uh, I can change my brain so I can change my income. Maybe I can change my brain so I'm healthy. Maybe I can change my brain you know, so I have better relations. Maybe I can change my brain so I can write a book. Change my brain so I can start a business or grow my business. All the how-to already exists. That's the, that's the most crazy thing. We already know how to. Unless you're trying to put a colony on Mars, you really don't need to figure things out. You just need to implement the right things. Follow a blueprint. John, there's this, I think it's a global belief going on around money that, you know, one day you're gonna make a lot of money and then you're gonna buy a bunch of stuff and then you're just gonna chill on an island. And, and, and here you are, you know, you've been a multimillionaire for so many years, you've built successful companies, you have it all, and you're still working so hard so hard putting together, you know, free events for people, coaching people. I see you doing Instagram lives. Why do you do all of this? So, first and foremost, I don't work hard. I work a lot, but let me ask you a question. If you love playing chess, don't you want to play all the time? If you love sailing, if you love sports, if you love reading, if you love cooking, don't you want to do that? And don't you want to find people to share it with? Because when you share what you love, aren't you fulfilled? Don't you feel like you have purpose? When I um, study and read and take complex things and make it easier for people to understand, I'm using my life, my time, the most valuable asset of all, to hopefully turn on the light in somebody else's life that maybe needed to hear something, maybe needed to do this instead of that. Look at that and that. Um, here's a process. Here's a plan. Have you ever considered this instead of that? So if you think about what do we all really want, let's go deeper again. What do, what do I want? I want to know that my life has purpose and meaning. I want to know that I can live an extraordinary life. I want to know that um, I can make a difference. I want to know that in, in one way or in many ways, um, I can contribute to the life of others, whether it's animals, trees, this beautiful blue planet I call home that I love, uh, another human being, another creation of God. If I can use my life and what's easy for me to make your life a little bit easier, oh my God. Like that is, that to me is like 
nirvana, right? And, uh, and so this is easy for me. Like I'm, I'm on with you on Instagram right now. This is not work for me. This is like I'm on the basketball court or I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm try, this is like, this is play for me. So if I can, if I can inspire, right, instill spirit into somebody's life because of the spirit that's in my life, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm high. <laughs> what happens in the brain, John? Because contribution, helping someone like random acts of kindness, they just have this particular type of a feeling. I don't know if it's dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin. Yes. Like, what happens when we do this? Because it's, it's like you feel it in such a special way. Well, there's, um, we have our brain, just I'll give you all a very, very quick lesson about the brain, right? We have uh, three major networks in the brain salience executive and default mode network those are the big networks and then we have these circuits so we have spiritual circuit when we feel connected uh to god or to other human beings we have um fear circuit we have motivational circuit we have um the uh, anxiety circuits panic circuits right yeah so when we contribute when we actually give we are activating the reward circuit, the act of kindness, the act of giving, the act of receiving a, thank you, TB. Oh, that, that was so kind. That just lights up our reward centers. That lights up our humanity. That lights that spiritual side of, I'm in you and you are in me. And this act of you giving to me I'm getting chills, right? Uh, it's like we, we, we love that. When I see the hearts, you know, on the screen, if that resonates with me, I love this, right? So I'm sharing something that's making you feel good, which is making me feel good. And I want to feel good. <laughs> I don't want to feel shitty. I don't want to feel, you know, the other feelings that are there. I want to feel good. So if, if uh, being grateful makes me feel good, uh, at giving you my knowledge, my wisdom, whether it's money, a tool, a skill, a free event that'll light up your life somehow, and then you can give that to another human being. TB, you know, I have, um, I have a, a visual in my head that I've had for 40 years. And uh, somebody said to me, you know, many, many years ago, like, you know, we're all on this journey called life. And I had this visual that if I'm on a journey, like, what do I want? well, I'd like the journey to have some light in front of it, right? And I, I had this visual, of if I have a hat on, you know, and there's a light to light up my journey, and there's a light behind me to light the people behind me's journey, if everybody had a light in front and a light behind, we would all share the light. And so I have this vision, and I've been so blessed with people who have had their light on for me. They have lifted me up when I needed it. They guided me with their light and they gave and gave and gave and gave to me, not traded with me, gave to me. If everybody is a go-giver and a go-getter, everybody has more than enough. And in a world of abundance that we live in, there's no scarcity except the scarcity that happens here. And so we're either going to live in a world of scarcity, a world of scarcity is not enough, a world of security, just enough, a world of, uh, a world of success, more than enough, or a world of significance where there's more than enough for all of us. There's more than enough money, more than enough food, more than enough water, more than enough of everything if we focus on more than enough, if we focus our brilliant brains on, on creating abundance and having abundance and giving abundance, and so if I could be a part of abundance thinking of more than enough and sharing some of what I've discovered and learned, and I could light up your life just a little bit, 
uh, and you light up the life of your husband, your wife, your children, your neighbor, the owner of the store that you go and pick up groceries from and you smile at them and, and give them a little bit of your light. That's, that's the law of attraction at the highest level because then we attract more of that in our lives. Absolutely, John. And I know we we're like 600 beacons of life, life here and light just lights exponentially. It's not like linear. It's like poof, it just quantum lights leap. and lights and lights and lights and it compounds and it compounds. Yeah, quantum leap. We could be making quantum leaps, quantum. right? And, and a lot of us are thinking about linear. One mm. plus one is two. Well, one plus one is also 11. <laughs> Right, true, true, true. And a lot of times we think one plus one is two. That's not true. Right. Take one drop of water, add it to another drop of water. We have one. <laughs> right. So, yes. So when we're talking about law of attraction, we're talking about really, you know, let's take the gift we all have, our brain, every brain TB. This is people don't don't even know this. Every brain functionally works the exact same way. So that means that Einstein's brain, I have uh, Einstein up there on my wall. Einstein's brain and your brain, it works the same. Now, maybe Einstein was able to use his brain a little bit better, using his imagination, being in deep thought, you know, playing around with deductive reasoning. Every brain functionally works the same. So if every brain works the same and every brain's processing, you know, 400 billion bits of information per, se per second, but we're only aware of, you know, five to seven to nine bits per second, is it possible? And this is where, you know, be in the question and the curiosity. Is it possible that I, meaning you, are creating your own reality? Is it possible that in the world of unlimited potential, you and I are creating our own reality? And is it possible that I can change the reality that I create in here? A lot of people, TV thinks, you know, think to themselves, I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's when I see it in here and believe it in here, I will see it out there. Because our brain isn't taking in information the way most people think they are. Our brain's actually projecting the map of our reality out there and looking for confirmation of our internal map of reality. We don't have the equation right. So we're dealing with the same thing I talked about earlier, believing that Santa Claus is real. We're believing the stuff that's in here is real. No, that's just the stuff that got conditioned Right. And we can get our brain and recondition it. And that's why, you know, the brain thoughts change your brain, change your income, but change your brain, change your life. I love it, John. John, uh, the brain fund is in a couple of weeks. And guys, please, 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 please sign up. Take the weekend, you know, use it for your brain. You, you we, we train all our muscles. You know, we go to the gym. When, when do we get some time to get into a neuro gym, right? But it's in a couple of weeks. For someone that, that, that just wants to, someone that wants to do something tomorrow, what's one small thing that you, you or an exercise that you just can give people, you know, watching this, that they can start today, they can start tomorrow to get on the proper way to, to, to work with the brain? So, um... The way that our brain works, and I assume everybody that's here wants to achieve more of their goals, their life's goals and dreams, right? So the way that our brain works, and my brain's falling apart, but I'll put it back together. The, brain, the way that our brain works is whatever it is that we have learned how to focus on is what patterns we create, and that's what drives our behavior. So the first thing Okay, the first thing we must do is um, get clarity on what is it that we want to achieve. Do you have clarity of what you want to achieve? Now, why is clarity so important? Well, imagine you get into an airplane and you're gonna go somewhere. Uh, you have to know the destination. If you get on a boat, 
and you want to, you know, go across the ocean somewhere, you need, where am I going? Because you, you want to, you want to have the vision. So the first thing we need to do is get clear on the vision. And I learned many, many years ago, instead of looking at your current results and saying, okay, here's my current results. Therefore, here's the lifestyle that I want to live. I learned how to change the process to say, okay, what is the lifestyle I want to live? And then what are the beliefs, the habits and the behaviors to earn enough money to live this lifestyle? It changes the equation. So the first thing we have to do is what does an amazing vision for your life look like in let's say three years or five years, if you could wave a magic wand and, 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 uh, have a certain lifestyle of where you live, how you live, how much you earn, who you help, who you've become, write that down first. Then ask yourself, in order to make that a reality, in order to make this vision, this lifestyle a reality, what are the character traits that I need to develop? What are the beliefs that I need to have? What are the habits that I need to implement? And if you don't know the answer, then spend the time getting the answer to that. Because if you just have a vision and goals of what you want without the character and the identity of who you need to be in order to have them, without the beliefs, without the habits, without the behaviors, you're gonna miss the important part of achieving goals. You might have the part of setting goals, yeah. But you need the other part to achieve goals. So I like to, I like to be realistic, all right, and saying, listen, uh, if I want to get in shape, whether it's mental shape, physical shape, or financial shape, there's a behavior, okay, that I need to implement. If I find out what is that behavior, then I can actually do the right things. Now, I also know that there are certain beliefs I need to have. Well, what would be the beliefs that I need to have? Write those down and then come to the Brainathon and we will show you exactly how to take your vision and your goals and we will show you how to train your brain to have the beliefs, the self-image and the fortitude to take inspired action until you achieve the goal. So you go from being a goal setter to being a goal achiever. You go from being a starter to being a finisher. I love it. John, thank you so much. It's been an honor. And I hope you enjoyed the energy here of our Law of Attraction Live International love Family it. just as much as we enjoyed everything you taught us because it's, 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 it's mind blowing. I love it and I'll come back. I love your, love your energy and who you are, TB, and I appreciate you getting involved with uh, uh, NeuroGym 10 years ago. I didn't even know that, so that was a nice surprise. Thank you so much, John, and I'm looking forward to the Brainathon. Have a Thank blessed you, week. Ahead. Bye. Thank you so much. And guys, please hang on for a moment because we are going to have this saved in our Instagram TV section. And you know I don't ask for much, but if you want to share this with a friend, if you want some people that want to get more clarity on how the law of attraction works and so on, say, hey, you know what? There's this guy who brought the star of the movie, The Secret, on live, and he spent 50 minutes explaining how all of this works because this can be eye-opening, and that's, what, that's why, what, 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 why we do it, guys. So we're going to have this saved on our Instagram TV section. Please watch it again. And uh, it's been a blessing. Have an amazing uh, week. And I'll see you again very, very soon. All the best.